So we're back here at the 966 uh, rear end repair. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. We had snowstorm and had to order some parts. And so to work on this PTO unit, one wants to stand it up vertically. And what one can do is um, put a bolt in these two holes here um, and it can rest on this shaft and these two bolts and it'll stand vertically. But before we can do that, we have to clean out the holes that are, of course, packed with dirt. Clean this out. Jeffrey uses a half inch tap to further clean out the threads. I'll do that and we'll get a little crescent wrench to turn it in. Okay, so we'll just turn this guy in to clean the dirt out. These are a couple of bolts from the housing. You're know, holding the housing on. And so they look like they might be about the right length. All right. And that's what we want to work on this thing. Okay, so there's a couple of things we want to work on on this guy. He mostly is working okay. Um, except that um, the pickup tube has been damaged. Uh, so we're gonna, so that this should be round and set in there nicely, but I guess whenever they removed or installed this previously, they kind of mashed it and damaged it. So see if we can do something to get this securely attached down where it's supposed to go. And also there's a lot, a lot of slop in the friction disc clutch assembly here. So um, I have a new set of friction discs I'm gonna put in there. And I think that'll probably get it back up and going. I'm not gonna do a complete rebuild on the whole. So just these four bolts to remove the pump unit, which is, this is the pump unit up here. And that's these four bolts. After considerable banging with the mallet, Looks like there might be some RTV down in there, holding it together. Hmm. Looks like this is where somebody's pried on it before. So you gently pry on it a bit more. I brought the engine crane over here so I could apply some upward pressure to this thing while prying on it. Cause it's kind of just, appears to be glued in there with uh, RTV or, or something at the moment. Pull up on it, pry on it. Ah, there we go. All right, now that RTV and that seal is popped loose, we can lift this out of there. All 
we can replace these uh, clutch packs. Take the snap ring out and um, place the clutch packs, clean everything up and put it back together. All right, good. I've seen people take these out and they shoot across the room before, so I was trying to take a more cautious approach, maybe. But that seemed to work pretty good. All right. All right, let me clean this place up and then we'll um, probably clean this gasket material off here and get things cleaned up and replace these clutch packs. Okay, so I got uh, the gasket surfaces all cleaned up and so now we're going to take the old uh, frictions and steels out of here and um, put some new ones in. Oh, looks like they had the, the, the regular setup for because it didn't look too bad, but it is kind of got big chunks of stuff removed. And that's the friction plane? Yeah, so the, these are called steels. Um, and this is the the friction. So the frictions have the teeth that are attached on the inside, and the steels have these pegs that are attached on the outside. And they um, this is like some probably asbestos material that allows for slippage and um, like a clutch. You know, it's clutch clutch facing essentially. It's not too bad. And uh, down beneath here is a um, hydraulic piston. That piston pushes this way and applies pressure to the clutch pack to engage this hydraulic clutch assembly. And this big spring here is like the return spring to push that big piston back when it doesn't have hydraulic pressure. Um, driving it. <laughs> All right, so I guess that looks okay. I got a rebuild kit, and these are the new ones. They look like there's more material there. They're not flaking off. So... And it's just kind of a different setup, so you're supposed to have Two at the bottom. So there's more frictions in this arrangement. Um, two steels go at the bottom, then a friction. One steel, friction, other steel. one steel at the top and then this is I don't know what it's called but it's a much thicker plate to kind of be the very top uh, and it goes on there like 
that. And then there's a snap ring that goes in here to hold the whole thing together. Get both of the ends in to their capture, not floating in a gap. Here you're using two picks to line up all the teeth. Yeah. And now the teeth are lined up. Get our plugs out of here. All right, so here's the gasket. And so this, this is the, um, I guess a dowel that holds um, the in intermediate gear between the, the 1000 and 540 shaft. So you have to make sure that's lined up properly. And then there's a oil hole here that the oil from the pump comes down there and then depending on where this is at it actuates that piston or not so you have to hmm. put this put the hole get things lined up make sure all the holes line up so this this big thing with these teeth is what meshes in those teeth on the frictions this goes on to get it all kind of aligned, I guess. Okay, so that's, I think that's good. Yep, that bolts. to address this pickup tube thing. Sort of mashed it in the vise a little bit more so it was less bent. And we f took up some of the extra space with this strap. So what I'm gonna do is clean it up good, put some, put some JB Weld up in here, clamp it together, and I think after the JB Weld sets in this extra strap, taking up some room, that'll, um, lock it in there pretty good and it shouldn't leak around the um, seal anymore. And this is a new seal. So it'll have a new seal and be fixed in place and should work. Just. It looks like they 
seals in a good spot. pretty solid but I think that's it we'll just um we'll put a new gasket around here when we put it back on the tractor and I think that's the PTO units ready to go again in the next video we'll put the PTO clutch unit back into the uh, tractor on the right here is a uh, link to the first uh, video in this series thanks for watching see you next time